Hey guys, good to see you again. It's been a while. Have you waited on me? All right guys, we're out here at the lake. I've got something a little bit special for you. More educational this one. We've got the new boat, which means we've got new graphs that need to be set up, but we also have the old boat. Those graphs will be set up by the one and only Captain Ron Kelly. We got him coming on out. We're gonna get him to dial these graphs in so we can get that pristine clear picture, which will help me catch more fish, but doesn't mean that I will. All right guys, so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna get in here with Captain Ron He's going to go through all the details that we need to get ironed out. Everything from, you know, uh, calibrating the trolling motors to dialing in, getting the best pictures that we can possibly get out of our down imaging, side imaging, 2D, Mega Live, 360, all that stuff. So that's what we're out here doing today is just trying to get everything to get the clearest picture that we can possibly have. That way when we go graft these offshore fish, we can pick them out very easily. All right guys, so one of the most important things I have on my boat is my Lake Master chip. And the reason I love these is I can detail it as much or as little as I want to, but there is a lot of intricacies that you can actually go into on these mappings to change things out for your personal preferences. We're gonna let Captain Ron talk about this right now. Yeah, man, so, so like Brian said, I believe one of the biggest game changers in the industry since I've been bass fishing was the introduction of these map chips. So the, the Lake Master chip is one of the most detailed utensils we're gonna use in our boat. This thing's gonna give us more information than almost any other thing that we've got in this entire system. So what I wanna show you is how I go through this particular map and I break it down and I customize it the way I like it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we've got a solid screen up. Now this is, this is the Humminbird Lake Master chip. You can see I've got the chip in the unit. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to menu twice. So I've got three different options in here that are gonna relate somehow to the map, whether it's navigation, whether it's the actual map itself, or whether it's the HB chart, which is allowing us to customize the map. So let's go back to navigation. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the settings on my map. There's a couple things I know I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use trails and I'm gonna use waypoints. So I wanna make sure those are set the way that I want them when I'm out on the water. So when I go down here to waypoint settings, when I hit my waypoint, this is the default setting. Right now, it's on a gold circle, which is perfect. I'm gonna keep that on a gold circle or something like that. You can go in here and you can change this. They've got a ton of different icons you can put. You can mark brush piles, rock piles, a spot that you just caught some fish on, or, or maybe you have one that you're just curious about. You wanna go back later. A lot of times you see anglers that find something on day one in a tournament, and by day three, they're just now hitting it. So you can kind of customize that in this setting right here. Now, the next thing is gonna be saved track default. Now this is extremely important because if you ever download any map chips for, let's say Lake Fork, there's a really popular map chip on Lake Fork and it gives you run-in lanes. The problem is these, these graphs come set up just like this. So the visibility is a little dotted line and you can't see it. So you save a trail. Let's say you've got a track that you're running in the back of a creek and you just made it perfect. You hit any stumps, any rocks, you want to save that trail. If you save it, straight out of the package on the default, you're gonna have a little dotted line that doesn't show up anywhere on your map. So one of the very first things we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here, we're gonna change our saved tracks default to something that's gonna be visible. The thing that I know on my Lake Master unit, the colors that are gonna be on the actual map are gonna be this lime green, red, white, and array of blue. So I wanna make sure that my trail is not gonna bleed into that or blend into that, that where my trail's standing out to where I'm not running and all of a sudden the red hits the red and I can't see where I'm supposed to go. So. I'm gonna change the style to a solid line, and I'm gonna change the color to a bright green or bright yellow. The yellow's nowhere on this map. Now I'm gonna make sure I save that. The next thing we have is casting rings. Casting rings are great, especially for the front graph, but Humminbird gives us a little something special on this Helix unit. It's called Waypoint Proximity Flags. 
Now, I'm not gonna use those back here because what's gonna happen is every time I have a waypoint and I'm within maybe a mile, a little over a mile, it's gonna pop up and give me a little flag that's gonna tell me exactly how far from that waypoint I am, which is great for up front because all I gotta do is pull up, be within 100 feet, and I can guarantee I'm gonna hit my target on my first cast. Back here, I'm not gonna put those on because I don't need them. I don't need to know the distance. But if I did, all I've gotta do is waypoint proximity flag, turn it to visible, and you notice right there, it's telling me how far I am from each one of those. That's a really cool feature, and it's only on this graph. The next thing's waypoint decluttering. You can notice this is off. Now, what happens is, if you're a tournament angler, especially, or if you're a home lake guy and you've got a thousand waypoints, it's gonna display all of the information and the icons with the decluttering off. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it on, and as we start to get closer to those targets, they're gonna pop up. Notice right here, there's a rock pile, and I can actually see the rocks. Over here, all I see is just yellow dots because I'm not close enough, so the information's hidden. It's just gonna help get that map a little bit less cluttered and you're gonna be able to navigate through there a lot better. I'm not gonna really use anything else on here. So let's hit exit and let's go over to chart. Now, map source is the first thing that I've got. It's gonna come up and it's gonna have auto. Auto is basically saying I'm automatically uploading this chip. We have two or three other base maps in here that we're probably not gonna use. However, if you don't have a Lake Master chip, you do have the option to go in here and change to these different um, base set maps. For this video, we're gonna stay on auto. Now we're gonna go down here to chart orientation. This is basically the way that the chart's moving as your icon is moving up the lake. I need it on head up. The only way I can do it on north up is if I'm asleep or I've been drinking. Otherwise, it's gotta be on head up. Navades, uh, Navades on bird eyes, I don't ever use bird eye view, so that can stay on. The rest of this, I'm just not gonna use. I'm gonna keep it default out of the package. The, the next one is HB chart. Now, so look at it like this, guys. Navigation is any, anything that's gonna get you to the fish, which is a trail or a track, or anything that's gonna help you locate the fish, which is a waypoint. Chart, this is Hummingbird's map. It's telling you, you can turn it, change some of the references. HB charts, Hummingbird allowing you to customize their map, and that's the way I remember this, and that way I know how to navigate through here. So, let's talk about this. Now, there's a new update. They've got a new chip out. It's got a whole lot more colors than this, but for this particular video, we're gonna talk about these colors and then it'll allow you to go into the new chip and customize all those colors the way that you like it. So first thing we're gonna go down to is shallow water highlight. I want anything from zero to what I like is three foot to be red. So if it's three foot, that gives me a couple foot of variance in these different lakes if the, if the, the contours are off a little bit. You know, I don't wanna be in three foot, this, this showing it's three foot of water. It's actually one foot of water. So, I'm doing three foot that gives me a little bit of a buffer. So everything from zero to three is red. I ain't running through red. The next thing is I've got my first highlight. So it's checked. On the new chip, you've got multiple highlights. So right here, my first highlight, this is the minimum and this is the maximum. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm, and that's the green, I want mine to go from land to red to green to deeper water. So I'm gonna butt this first number up to this one. So let's go shallow water highlight, three, that minimum, we're gonna put that minimum at three. Okay, so the maximum number is the one that we're gonna manipulate a lot, we're gonna use as a tool. Notice when I did that, everything turned green, okay? So I wanna make sure I see some of these drains. See this contour line, this little deeper drain running through. So I'm gonna change that bottom number. It's at 30, I'm gonna bring it up. Let's get it up to 15. A lot of times offshore in the summer, I'm keeping this three to 15. So everything from three to 15 foot is gonna be green. So we get a little bit of a contour line in here. So watch this, guys. This is the cool thing about this particular setting. Right here, this is solid green. Let's go bring that green a little bit shallower. Let's go up to 12. See that white? Okay. So now all we have is white. So now we're going from land to red to green to white. Here's how we're going to fix that. These depth colors. We're going to drop that to three. Now we see some blues in there. Now our brain's starting to pick this up. We ain't hitting nothing red because we know red's an alert. Green's telling us, hey, that's probably the area the fish are at. And then these array of blues, they're gonna help our minds dictate what the deeper water is. And you'll notice there's a little light blue and it'll start to get deep, deeper. Now, depending on the reservoir and the lake you're on, is gonna depend on the actual blue here. This isn't super deep at Lake Fork where I guide full time. Out in the middle of the lake, this is really, really dark, almost a, a, a dark royal blue like this because it's so much deeper. Now, one thing I do wanna show you here that, that you're gonna notice and probably have some questions about, you see this white up in here? I'm not, I can't explain this really, but for whatever reason, some lakes and some particular maps, even though this is zero three and this is three to 15 or 12 or whatever it is, 
it, it puts a little bit of a buffer in there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck that green up under that red, if that makes sense. I'm going to back that up to two and that should tuck that green up under that red. So here's what my brain's picking up. When I'm looking at this overall map and I'm driving around and I'm graphing on a lake that I'm not familiar with or I'm familiar with, I'm noticing the hard contour changes in the green. My brain's seeing the highlights, which on the new chip, you can have so many different highlights in it and it allows you to customize it even more. Okay, so I've, I've zoomed out and I've zoomed into Lake Fork where I guide full time. So I'm gonna show you guys on the depth colors, the arrays. I'm gonna zoom out and you're gonna notice right here. See how light blue it is all the way to that dark blue? Now, what I also wanna do is I wanna show you when we're customizing these colors through here, I wanna show you what it does. So right now, I'm um, um, basically three. I've got three on my shallow. The zero to three is the red. Then I've got the two. Remember the two is that green's tucked back up under that red because we had a little white line. So I've got essentially three to 15. Now let's go look at the map. Notice the point with the little hump on it is, is really, really highlighted. Notice this little drain right here, how highlighted that is. As an angler, our eyes are gonna pick that up a lot better than let's say if we drop that green way back up to five or six foot and we don't notice the green and the contour changes quite as much. We can see it, we gotta do a whole lot more investigating versus driving down the road or driving down the lake, looking side to side on our map, trying to find little drains or points or humps or whatever it is. So that's what we're gonna use that green for now. Here's the deal. I'm showing you guys this green highlight, and I was going out to 15 for offshore fishing, highlighting humps, drains, points, that sort of deal. I'm gonna show you guys one more feature on this chip that's gonna help you out a lot. And this is one of my favorite things about Hummingbird. It's the water level offset. This is one of the greatest things, especially this year at Lake Fork and all our other lakes, they're super low because of the drought. So watch this. We're gonna take water level offset. At Lake Fork right now, we're about almost six foot low. Let's drop it six foot. Notice that we just lost a whole lot of lake. This is gonna save you guys so much time. You're gonna be a more efficient angler. You're gonna be able to stay in the creeks. You're gonna be able to find offshore targets because of the Lake Master chip. And I hope this helps. All right guys, so as you can see, there's a lot of settings that you can go into your Lake Master chips and change up to give you a better picture and allow you to navigate. And as Captain Ron said, be a little bit more efficient on the water. Stay tuned for the next one that we're gonna have. We're gonna have this as a series with Captain Ron talking about all of the intricacies of these Hummingbird units. We'll see you next time.